Dear colleagues, guys, the topic today is what dentists never think about. It's a huge topic and I will try unpack part of the possible topics inside. And first of all, I will want to start to introduce myself. I was born in uh, St. Petersburg in 69 and uh, I started my undergraduate in uh, St. Petersburg and after three years in 19 I immigrated to Israel and I continue my education in Tel Aviv University. After I finished Tel Aviv University uh, in 94 I uh, got into the army service as a dentist and I have a huge experience not just in endodontics but also in traumatology and you will see my different model uh, today about trauma. Uh, after that, I decided to go deeply in endodontics, and in 1999, I started postgraduate endodontic program in Jerusalem University. I finished it after three years in 2002, and I continue to be part of endodontic department of Jerusalem University. In 2011, I started an amazing part of my academic life. Till now, I'm there. I am director from 2011 of postgraduate endodontic program in Sheba Hospital, uh, IDF, Israel Defense Forces. It's army program for army dentist, three years program, and uh, uh, it's very very interesting to take a young dentist in the beginning of their um, of the endodontic life and to see how they change. Uh, their approaches and their manual possibilities in our field. Uh, of course, I'm lecturing a lot around the world from 2002. I did a lecture on uh, European uh, Society Congresses, on uh, IFIA Congresses. Uh, I was in different countries with my lecture. I used three languages, my native Russian language, of course Hebrew and, as you see today, English one. And I like it very much to share my knowledge and to share my vision of our profession at a good analytic uh, work with the contemporary and classic literature. Of course, I do research by myself until today I published more than 60 articles, most of them in peer-reviewed journal like Journal of Endodontics, International Endodontic Journal, Endodontic Topics and uh, other Australian endodontic journal too. And uh, you know, it's always a very mm, nice moment, moment of proud that you see your article or your research was published. But uh, always I have a question, if it's interesting for somebody, <laughs> maybe it's interesting job for me, how can I check, how can I see that what I'm doing interesting to the people in the world? And today we have a huge opportunity we have on different sites and especially on Google Scholar possibility to know the rate of citation of your work. And in 2022, I uh, had a very nice, a very nice achievement. Um, more than 1,000 citation of my researchers in the world, and today it's even more. As you see, more than uh, 1,200 citation. What is safe for me? It's safe for me that my researchers are interesting for other people for other researchers in the world that also like endodontists like me. Of course, in my regular practice, in my clinic, I'm endodontist. I work with just referral cases, and as you understand, it's very difficult and complicated referral cases, and uh, uh, sometimes it's not a work, sometimes it's just diagnostic procedure, and after diagnostic procedure, I can send back patient with recommendation of extraction, like, you know, VRF or some profound lesion of external cervical resorption. But most of cases, of course, I try to save the teeth and I do different type of treatment. And uh, of course, in the end, I put a temporary filling. I know that I recommend during my lecture for the people that do endo, the best approach today, you finish the case, please, do the post-endodontic restoration, but because I work with referral dentists, okay, I must to 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 <laughs> to, to show to the people to referral dentists that they can work and also earn money. You know, it's economic point of view. I can't do a post-endodontic restoration. 
And uh, seven years ago, I opened a new clinic. It's an amazing clinic. I like it very much. I work today with a very good specialist in, from Israel. It's a multidisciplinary clinic because we work free and dentist. I, Dr. Verit Katsanelli, Dr. Joe Berenzhak, that now is president of Israel and Aeronautic Society. We have periodontist Dr. Ron Lev, that was the president of Israel Periodontology Society. We have a professor, Yudit Sadiq, one of the best men in the field of oral medicine. We have also Karen Yudovich, amazing surgeon. We also work with the Frat Mayan, that amazing periodontist. And we do today many interdisciplinary work. For example, during apical surgery, if after examination and CBCT, we understand that lesion is not pure endodontical, but also periodontal, we together with periodontists do surgery. Or many surgeries we do together in the field of external cervical resorption. Many, many interesting fields I like very much. I work and enjoy it. And because of I work no more than three times a week in my clinic, and most of time I work with uh, on university, on private courses, I continue to love what I'm doing. <laughs> and this is my secret, why I like what I'm doing. And today I want to share with you small but important moment of our everyday practice. Clinical example. This case was referred to me by a very good dentist that finished endodontics at two 21, and he was in shock after follow-up that he saw so huge radiolucent lesion. And uh, he asked me what I can do here. Maybe I, I, I need to uh, retreat this tooth, maybe surgery, maybe extraction, maybe we will treat uh, 22. Okay, and the first of all I explain that I have no idea because I have no initial x-ray. And he sent me initial x-ray. And indeed, in this situation, what I see, I see that lesion is bigger. The patient was totally asymptomatic. Asymptomatic patient, and on follow-up x-ray, we see a bigger lesion. What we can do now? First of all, we must understand a biological process here. If we have radiological lesions that link to the tooth, we understand that we have a different important type of cells inside of this lesion. The most important one is macrophage, okay, that was uh, published in article of my teacher, Professor Tzvi Mezger, in 2000, the role of macrophage in periapical lesion. We know that after a microorganism or part of them that go out of the canal, macrophage meeting them and go through activating procedure. In end of this activating procedure, in a chain of some biological reaction in a different type of interleukins, we have activated osteoclast that begin bone resorption, and in the end, we see this radiolucent area. What's interesting that after activation, osteoclast works two weeks, but macrophage can be activated during a couple of months. This is a certain important point in this story. Please see the literature. Please the recommendation of Dag Wurstovic. And you can see the first recommended follow-up, X-ray follow-up, is six months. Because we know that if we do follow-ups immediately, during one or two months, we can fall in the trap. Because maybe we did a good work here, good disinfection. But macrophage continue to work and they continue to activate the osteoclast and lesion is growing. And if this lesion is symptomatic, the most important question that I asked this dentist was when you finish the treatment. And answer was two months ago. Okay, we will continue without intervention, without additional treatment, okay? We will see, and you can see the final result. The result after six months, amazing. A good healing process, heal lesion. If dentist don't understand and biological basic of apical periodontitis, 
he can be equipped with the best microscope and the best instruments and material and he will hurt his patient because he will do retreat, surgery, extraction without understanding that we are seeing a regular healing process. By the way, this story of activated macrophages can influence other clinical situation. Maybe you met the mm. other possible scenario. For example, here, dentist finished the treatment and on the obturation X-ray, you can see that this obturation is a little bit shorter than a rentgenological apex of this tooth. But during follow-up, suddenly you see that good aperture point over the apex. Why? The same reason. The same reason that osteoclast will be activated one more time if we have activated macrophages. And this is the reason why we finish the treatment, but we have resorption and periapical area, and sometimes this resorption will also hurt the apex. Please see this clinical example from my practice more than 20 years ago. Okay? Chronic apex collapses, you see cyanotraxa tracing, you see already loosened area, and I think you see that we have a really open distal root. And of course, I see this open distal root, and I think, okay, I must do here some apexification technique, or maybe just apical plug from MTA, and I use here calcium hydroxide, and after cyanostructure has disappeared, I put an MTA plug, it's not easy, but I am okay with MTA over the apex, we know the most biocompatible material in our field, everything is okay, but not everything is okay. In mesial root that looks okay, I did so great overfilling, wow, why I did it? Why I did it? What the problem? The problem is the situation that I have not enough knowledge in this stage of my career. Because in 2000, or from 2000, we have amazing research that check the tooth with apical periodontitis, that for some reason, uh, dentists decided to extract them. First of all, they took the periapical x-ray and tried to see in how many cases they have apical radiolucency and apical resorption. And they show us that about 20% of the cases, when we have apical periodontitis, we see some resorption of apical part of the root. But after they extract the tooth, they check them histologically. And what they saw, that almost an 80% of the cases, we have resorption of apical part of the root. It's explain us why we have a different type of endo in our clinic. The easier group, the endovital teeth much more difficult cases. It's infected tooth with apical periodontitis and one of the explanation is resorption of apical part. And of course, the third group is retreatment. Totally different story. For example, we understand now that sometimes this resorption can open the apex. And for example, in my case, I can explain why during obturation I had so huge overfilling because I have no apical stop in this open, reserved apex. This apical inflammatory root resorption can really destroy the root apex. And it will influence not just the technique of obturation, but also the everyday process, process of whirling lens determination. What we know about apex locators, if we will see some different reports and researchers about this uh, type of equipment. We see that electronic apex locator work precisely in 95 till 90 percent of cases, but mostly in vital cases. What about non-vital teeth? What about apical resorption? We have totally different accuracy. Accuracy about 63%. Please take it in account. When you use Apex Locator in these cases, this Apex Locator is not so good and accurate like 
vital cases. Accuracy, not 85, but 63%. Take it in account. Please see this case that was referred to me. Then we start with apixification, traditional apixification process in 2011, many years ago. Also very old case. And uh, open also to number 12, I think, without exact reason. In most of cases that we have a huge lesion, just one piece is the source of the lesion. In many cases, then it's because you see big lesions that started to open different teeth. It's not a good approach. But the problem is that dentists start this case without seeing the border of this radiolucent area. And this is a really medical legal problem. Because if we don't see a border of periapical area, we can't diagnose finally the case. And of course, we can't start the treatment. Okay, please see this case. Of course, it's understandable, 237. It's broken and for extraction. Uh, my question about uh, 36. Uh, do you see some uh, radiolucent area? Maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe you have something here, or maybe you have something here, or maybe you have something here. Are you sure that you can see the border of this lesion? Are you sure that you have lesion? Okay, not lesion, area, radiolucent area. I don't know. If you are not sure what we are doing, first of all, additional periapical x ray. And again, you have no answer. What about border? Please refer patient for panoramic or CBCT. In this specific case, panoramic x ray was done and you suddenly see a huge multilocular radiolucent area. Nothing about endodontic origin. It was just near 236. And finally, after biopsy, lymphangioma mimicking apical periodontitis was described. It was discovered here. You understand that from medical legal point of view, if you will start here endodontic treatment, you and of course your patient will be in trouble. And of course here, first of all, I ask panoramic x-ray. Today I will ask CBCT, but it was many years ago. And you can see huge lesion, but the tooth 11 and 12 inside of this lesion, yes, the lesion, it's endodontic origin lesion, and when we see this use legion, many, many clinicians over the world continue to use the term cyst lesion or cystic lesion. Why? Because it's huge and because it has a radio park border. It's a real problem. All years from Bashkar from 80s to Domenico Ricucci to 90s and to very nice work of Thomas von Arx that used not regular x-ray, but CBCT, and try to see if on CBCT we can differentiate between granuloma and cysta, it was impossible. No real possibility to differentiate between granuloma and cysta. And today we understand that no granuloma or cysta must be written in the file of patient. No clinical diagnosis of radicular cyst and periapical granuloma. Our diagnosis in apical periodontitis. And from histological point of view, it may be granuloma or it may be cyst, but it doesn't matter because in both of them, the source is microorganism. And first of all, we will do endodontic treatment. And after follow up, at least six months, we will see what's dynamic of healing. And we will have. A decision and we will take a decision if we need or don't need surgical approach. Please see this patient. Do you want to send it to refer it to surgeon? Think about super aggressive surgery here. Start first of all with classic endodontics and what I did 20 years ago, the most classical approaches, irrigation, agitation, calcium oxide, regular apixification and please see a very nice healing during six months 
without surgery. And again, by the way, I'm almost sure that the treatment of tooth number 12, it's over treatment, but uh, somebody started before me. Okay, today with CBCT, we stitch much bigger lesion. Why? We know that we see radiolucent area on two-dimensional x-ray in most of cases, a real histological picture much bigger. But when you see CBCT, now I prepare very interesting research, I uh, hope it will be published. We try to show, example, that in most of cases the real lesion lesser than what you see in CBCT. Why? Because what is black and white in x-ray? What is hypodense area? It's area that it's not enough calcium uh, hydroxyapatite crystal that will stop x-ray. When I see something black, a hypodense area on CBCT, maybe that part of them, part of this area, it's a really reserved tissue, soft tissue, and part of this area is demineralized bone. And also, surgeon doesn't like this problem of cortical plate, okay, this fenestration of cortical plate. And most of cases that you will show this case to surgeons, they will extract the tooth. This was a very nice case. It was a real... <laughs> uh, a really uh, 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 stuck in you know, a with surgeon and they were 100 percent sure that the tooth will go to the extraction and i did something that i don't do in most of cases in most of cases after treatment i continue to follow up with a regular x-ray but in this particular case i decided that i will do follow up with cbct to show the final result to surgeon. And I did it. And you can see the final result. You can see after six months, much smaller lesion and a very well regenerating of cortical plate. Please don't afraid of a big lesion. Try to start with regular endodontists. It's important. Okay, additional case, you can see radiolucent area. You see it's looking good endodontics, but uh, this lesion continue to grow, so we have follow-ups. What may be additional reason? Of course, the most often reason is microorganisms, but not just microorganisms. What we know is that osteoclast is activated by macrophages. In this specific case, after surgery, because the regular endodontics didn't work and apical uh, surgery was done and this uh, soft tissue was sent to biopsy, we found, we found a giant cell. Why we have here a giant cell? We know from, from pathology. We know that if some foreign body go inside of our body, macrophages will meet them and try to eliminate. But if it's impossible to macrophage eliminate this foreign body, they will, will take additional friends. They will connect it together to form the giant cell in order to destroy this foreign body. But it's impossible. And you have a place of inflammation with super activated giant cell from macrophages and you have a growing lesion without microorganisms what you have foreign body granuloma and foreign body granuloma we can see in our area in the nonics 20 30 years ago we saw many tal granulomas when we use our gloves with talc today nobody i think used gloves with a talc, we use a nitrile or vinyl gloves without a talc, and this is another problem. What is the problem today? The problem today is cellulose granuloma. If part of cellulose will go over the apex, the same story, macrophages have no ability to destroy cellulose. And again, you will see giant cell. 
and you will see around this part of cellulose, you will see an inflammation. How cellulose go over the apex? From very often procedure for the drying of the root canal. You use a paper point. When your apex is closed, not a problem. You put your paper point to take it out, no problem at all. But if your apex is resorbed, what I described before, in 80% of apical periodontitis, you have resorbed apices. And maybe when you push power with power, okay, your paper point it can go over the apex in, on the back. Part of the paper point will be over the apex. One of the very important recommendations of our meeting today is that you take to your home, home message, that when you work with the tooth and you have some suspicious of non-closed apex in the stage of canal drying, please take paper point on working length and put it gently in the canal and out of the canal. Please don't push it over the canal, it's important. Additional possible problem, rare today, it's pulse granuloma with different vegetable food particles go over the apex. Of course, it may be just in case that somebody Somebody left open tooth. I'm sure that we almost don't see this false approach to treatment of the teeth. It's not a good idea to leave the tooth open. It. One of them, it's different vegetable food particles that go outside of the canal. It can be a reason for foreign body granuloma. Additional case with radiolucent area, intact lower incisor, Okay, patient have no problem, it's just a regular examination. Suddenly you see this radiolucent area. And the problem is that people try to diagnose the cases from the pictures. Okay, it's not a good idea. Because when you will start to check it, you suddenly can understand that this radiolucent area have no linkage to this teeth because osteoclast may be activated without infection. Again, percussion minus, palpation minus, no pockets, no sinus tracts, and what is most important, cold test is positive. And when you can see all this in intactis, in most of cases, by the way, you will see it in women about age 40, but it may be also in a young boy, 18, on an old man, 80, it doesn't matter, and maybe in everyone, you suddenly understand that this is a vital tooth. It, what you have, a very often benign situation, the named periapical cemental dysplasia. In the first stage of periapical cemental dysplasia, you have radiolucent teres, and if you will continue to follow up in some cases, you will see stage 2, radiolucent and radiopaque mixed appearance and the last free stage you will see almost fully radiopaque appearance. I'm almost sure that in this case all this treatment was done without a real need because the dentist in the beginning saw huge periapical radiolucent area. Please take it in account. Okay, additional things that dentist <laughs> Never think about, or not always think about. It's a trap of three dimensionally four on the roots. Okay, now I show you the extracted lower first molar, and I show you the invagination from furcation area from distal part of mesial root that was described first in our literature by Bergenholz and Niemann in 1969. And in the 80s, Abu Ras explained us that in this area of invagination, if we will cut and we will see the tooth, we will find here very thin dentin. And this thin dentin was named danger zone. Understandable why, yeah? Because we, when we enlarge during instrumentation this canal, in this danger zone, we can have a perforation. And many years we thought that 
danger zone in low molen mesial root from furcation area, from distal part of the root, till amazing work of Professor Marco Versiani. In this specific work, she shows us the danger zone may be also on mesial plane on roots, amazing 40% of the canal. Wow! You can see danger zone in regular place, in distal aspect, furcation area, but also you can see from mesial part, outer part of the root. Please take it in account. And for example, we can see danger zone in C-shaped canal. I like this topic, C-shaped canal, because it's extreme in endonautics. And in most of cases, when you check the literature, you see that danger zone in lingual wall, special and mesial location. Mesial lingual location, the danger zone is very thin. What is very thin? How? I will show you. In this particular walk in 2004, danger zone, before the dentist start to work, was 0.26 millimeter. Wow! <laughs> One, two movement and you have a strip perforation. I also published a work from our department. We published it in 2017 and we show that indeed in 80% of the cases the lingual wall have a danger zone. But in 20% of the cases this danger zone may be also on buccal wall. That's important. And of course, the best way to have a CBCT scan before you're starting to work with C-shaped canal. It's so not so easy story. And we must be very, very gentle during instrumentation. Because sometimes when we use a small diameter of instrument, we try to enlarge a little bit to improve disinfection. Because we hear from time to time from different people that a big enlargement will enable a good irrigation. And you are right. But in these specific particular cases with the danger zone, a big enlargement will be a reason for strip perforation. It's not so easy, not so easy to diagnose strip perforation. I tell you the truth. In this case, I think I never will say that I see strip perforation. And by the way, on CBCT of this case also, nothing. But on Excel slices, we see the strip perforation. And Excel slices of CBCT scan, it's the best approaches to see and to diagnose strip perforation. See this case again. When, if somebody will show me this case, I will see, I will say, maybe we have some, you know, lateral canal, strange one, but you know, please see the CBCT. 100% strip perforation, amazing. And we have today many of them. The dentists have no idea, they don't understand why this patient go back, why he have a pain, very nice treatment. I, I use a warm technique of obturation. It's lateral canal. It's not lateral canal. It's strip perforation. Amazing work of Frank Peke. Very good researcher from Switzerland that uh, was shown us on EC Congress in Barcelona. I don't know why he didn't publish it. It was, to me, very nice and very important research about med and mesial canal and lower uh, molar. Uh, he find a group of, media, uh, of molar with median mesial canal and work uh, in the same canal with instrument taper 2, micro CT, taper 4, micro CT, taper 6, micro CT, and show us the final result. And again, what you can see, the situation, the median mesial canal placed in area of the most thinnest area of dentin. In a real in danger zone, it, this canal must be shaped properly because this work explains us that instrument with taper six and sometimes with taper four can 
be a reason for a straight perforation. And after this work, I totally changed my approach to median mesial canal. I work in median mesial canal as a totally different instrument. And I don't use 06 and I try not to use 04 instrument inside of this median mesial canal. Again, you were speaking about danger zone. Important research was done in my alma mater university, in Tel Aviv University, by a group of Professor Aviat Tamsha that show us that when we have an upper premolar with two roots, in most of cases, in buccal root, you have in the gination and you have a danger zone. An endodontist and, of course, prostodontist must be very gentle in buccal root and strong recommendation to prostodontist. Please give them this slide. Please do a picture and show them. It's important. They must avoid post and buccal root of upper premolar. You as an endodontist must be very gentle with small taper file, not big enlargement, but please recommend not put post and buccal root of upper premolar. I think when we're speaking about CBCT, it's important CBCT not just for endodontists, but also for prostodentists. For example, for example, this patient from any reason go to endodontics and uh, First premolar on the left, on the right side. Please show this case to your prostodontist. See what you have in buccal root. What's about this danger zone? Super danger zone again in buccal root. And you understand that in your endodontic work, you must be very gentle. And of course, it's not a tooth to put a post in buccal root. And you can go through CBCT from axial slices with your prostodontist, for example, in your clinic, and decide what route can be suitable or can't be suitable for post placement. It's a very nice approach. Okay? And of course, if you see this danger zone, it's minimal invasive endo. 30, 35. Enlargement, taper 0204, all instrument today we have is reduced coronal taper. And understanding and knowledge of literature plus estimation of CBCT scan will help you to choose canal suitable for post. And by the way, preparation for post, the best approach is worm plugger by endodontist without all, you know, drills of prostodontists. It's the best approach, it's the best approach, knowledge, understanding, CBCT, and odontists prepare to avoid perforation, strip perforation. Good. Today, many lecturers speak about evidence-based medicine. What is this and uh, why we need it? I will show it on a very nice example. Okay, I like this example. It's a very noble work in field of endo and prostodontics done by Ray and Trop in 25. They took uh, about 1,000 periapical um, status mm -hmm. and they decided that on every tooth they will write endodontics in good quality, endodontics in bad quality, prostodontics good quality, Prostodontics, bad quality. And uh, you have four different groups. Of course, the best prognosis was in the group of good endo and good prostodontists, more than 90% of the cases. And the, this work won one of the first to explain us the importance of high quality coronal seal. Okay? If one of endo of prostodontics have a problem, we have lesser success, okay? For example, if you have a good endo, uh, excuse me, if you have a good prostodontics and bad endo, you have lesser success. Much more lesser success you have if you have a good endo, bad prostodontics. And of course, the worst group is bad endo, and bad prostodontics. But what it's amazing here, please see. 
you have no 100% of failure. You have no 100% of success, but you have no 100% of failure. In the group, the end was bad, and prostodontic treatment was bad, you have 18% of success. Please see it. This situation can explain you very much what we have today on social media, guys. Sometimes you see some, you know, unusual, amazing work. You see, wow, amazing approach. I want to. But you have no idea in what group on this four group you are now. Okay? We must understand that we have a Gauss. Gauss curve that explain us that most of cases here, but we can have also a very rare result on both sides. For example, please see this tooth. This tooth must be in here, in the first group. Good ender, good coronal seal. We must succeed. No, this tooth was extracted. Because we have no 100% of success. Please, another example. Dentist ask me, what do you think about this case? I say, see, oh, it's so destroyed tooth. Okay, you did a nice ender, but please see the situation. No coronal dentin. Okay, it's impossible to, to do something here. Okay, you must extract this tooth. <laughs> Dentist say, you're not right, I will show you. And he put this amazing follow-up. Wow! You have a tooth, at least now, <laughs> during the x-ray, before VRF, and you have a good healing. What about this case? In this situation, 80% of the cases. Please be careful with the story. The idea of evidence-based medicine, the idea of good research today, with good significantly statistical results to understand in what group we are now at what method we can do for the more predictable treatment i want to use the methods in my clinic for predictable treatment i won't be in this group and not in this and not in this and of course not the last one okay and my approach to the predictable outcome in our clinic is first of all basic knowledge basic knowledge classical literature contemporary literature critical review of this literature understanding that we have influence of statistic and gauss curve and no treatment can give me 100 percent success and no treatment will give me 100 percent of failure and of course, of course, of course, private experience. It's super important. We understand it. And we work on it. And we improve ourselves. Okay. It was some small topics in the field of what dentists never think about. And now I want to show you what I created for you. I took a three-year postgraduate endodontic problem. And at this endodontic program, I concentrated in nine two-day courses and i started these courses now in dubai from december and during three years i will go with you during all topic of endo with classical literature and with contemporary literature and with huge amount of clinical cases done by me my students and my colleague from the world it will be amazing journey we will start with the first topic in December. It's first topic, practical nuances of everyday endodontists, where I will explain about contemporary diagnostic process in endodontics. We will speak about anatomy of apex and working length determination methods from tactile sensation to interpretation of radiological images 
to Epic's locator, we will speak about all irrigation, annual sale, percentage, how to use, different type of agitation, sonic agitation, ultrasonic irrigation, hypodynamic uh, approaches. We will speak about EDTA, citrus acid, malic acid, and of course the most contemporary continuous scalation approach of using ED, uh, or etidronic acid. We will speak about chlorgixidin. We'll speak about medicine inside of the root canal, when to use Ledermix, when to use or not to use calcium hydroxide. I think a good clinician must understand positive and negative feature on every material and use it per patient, per clinical situation. Decision like I will put in every case calcium hydroxide or I will never put calcium hydroxide, it's not a good way. It's a, it's a way of not so good basic knowledge. Every material has positive and negative feature, and we must choose in what situation we will use it. And of course, during this course, I will give you amazing review of pharmacology, what we have today with new antibiotic protocols, and what about non-steroid anti-inflammatory drug combination. We will speak about first aid of endodontics, very important issue. What we will do with painful reversible pulpitis on acrotypical abscess, super important course. After that, the second course, it's about all about instrumentation, obturation. This course, I go through the stainless steel and nitro instrument up to the last uh, last generation of control memory wire one to the super new generation of scrubbing instrument like XP finisher and true shape NSF system. We will speak about cold lateral compaction, warm compaction, thermocompaction, uh, gutta percha on a carrier and also injectable gutta percha, how to use it in one case we can use different approaches. I created by myself a different uh, algorithm of working accordingly to my classification of canal complexity that I published in 2011 in Journal of Endodontics and after that I improved my classification in 2021 and in every uh, different form and morphology of the canal I will give you a different approach to instrumentation and to obturation. It's amazing course, I like it very much. The third meeting, third model, it's model of retreatment, and I will divide it to two parts. The first part, it will be decision making, when to retreat, when not to retreat, when to do apical surgery, or maybe to retreat. And of course, during retreatment story, I will explain how I will go through zir uh, zirconium crown or PFM crown, how we will take out uh, metal or titanium uh, posts, or cast post and what we will do with glass fiber post. This is a real problem today, we know. How we will retreat tooth and anatomic work done on base of gutta percha, silver points, thermophil, and uh, gutta percha and bioceramic silver today. This is a huge problem, yeah? And uh, many, many, many nuances, okay? Small things. Uh, uh, life hacks that will really improve your everyday practice. And course and model number four, one day I will speak about all possible cracks of vital and non-vital teeth and corner part and after I will speak about vertical root fractures of tooth. With endodontic treatment I will explain the not so easy and complicated diagnostic process and of course we will speak about possible situation of treatment of these cracks and second day I will speak about open apices and we will speak about apixification and apical plug technique and apixogenesis, revascularization, revitalization, regeneration. I do a huge review and again in different interesting researchers of my department and of course review of what we have in the world. The fifth meeting one day is all about resorption, external cervical, internal, external inflammatory replacement resorption, why we have it, what we can do, how we will diagnose it, what the treatment approaches, what the algorithm trees during this treatment, and what its outcomes.
what we can explain to patient and to dentist. Second day will be about all about endoperial lesion. We will do for C classification. We go through pathogenesis. We will understand how we can understand if primary lesion was endodontic or periodontal, or maybe it was a really true endoperial lesion. How we can start treatment. We will do both of them, or we will start with endo or with peril. If we need some follow-ups, what the length of these follow-ups, how we will understand when we have in this specific case also important uh, day and sometimes periodontology society invited me to give this type of lecture. As the uh, meeting number six, I like it very much. I start here with microbiology with the uh, explanation of modern understanding of intraradicular biofilm about part and importance of planktonic microorganism, understanding of biofilm, primary, secondary, persistent endodontic floor, what we have today in the world to deal with this infection, lasers, all on all new machine, and in the end, of course, I will explain a new approach is in one versus multiple visit endodontics. And I will give you my own 16 scenarios in cleaning for choosing different type of instrumentation, irrigation, and decision about visit in one or two or more visits. The next meeting, it's meeting of traumatology. Everything about trauma. This meeting will be based, of course, at all recommendations, all guidelines of International Association of Dental Traumatology. We will speak about all fractures, crown fractures, root crown fractures, root fractures, alveolar process fracture. We will speak about all type of luxation and what we can do. We will speak on first aid, on follow-ups, on type of uh, uh, splints, very important two days. After that, I will give you today about endo and prostodontics. And here, I like very much if some of prostodontics go to my course. It's very interesting conversation. Then this course, I will explain or problematic of the loss of dentin, and again we will speak about PCD, peripheral dentin loss, at what we can do in end, or what we can do, and prostodontics together. Okay, to have some compensation, uh, what we have today in field of post-endodontic restoration, with post, without post, different type of post, lengths, design, different type of cements, what about caspal protection, onlays, overlays, endocrowns, regular crowns, what we have with stress distribution on the teeth, when we have this different cementation, what we have with decision to do or not to do prophylactic endodontics, very important two-day model for a good and effective work of endo and prostodontics in the same clinic. And the last course will be about surgery. It, by the way, not just apical surgery, and every surgery that we can use in our clinic for perforation repair, for treatment of external cervical resorption. Uh, it will be, by the way, interesting also of the people that don't like surgery. I know many in the dose that don't like surgery, but I think if you don't do surgery, you must understand when to choose or not to choose surgery approaches. And this is a very important part of this lecture. Again, as always, I start, I start with biology understanding of the process, go to decision making, and just in the end, I go to the technical, uh, technical part and technical detail of this procedure. And of course, I will give you a full review of material on the market and a field of endodontic surgery today. I understand that maybe and flying to Dubai it's not so easy and the people that like online online uh, approaches I prepare for you online program uh, the name of my online program is complex cases in endodontics and includes seven lessons seven webinar that also may be interesting for you you can check it you can see it and uh, I hope that uh, our today meeting it was interesting for you and um, also effective. I think a couple of my recommendations you can take now and to use during your everyday work. 
if you want you can connect me on my instagram or uh, on the facebook and of course i will be glad to see you on my live meeting and also on an online program thank you for your attention and have a nice day